From the ground up I built it with the intent of bringing my town up Y'all getting all wound up Y'all getting up all... Telling me y'all yeah, this impossible I'm looking at him like nah that's an obstacle bro Hi everybody, welcome to episode 12 of the Kevin Widop show. Here I am with Leon Rose, international salsa dancer, performer and comedian. Welcome to the show, Leon. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here. Excellent. So, um, Leon and I met last month at the Salsa Beach Splash Festival uh, in the midst of my, uh, my love affair, my, my, my blossoming love affair with, with salsa dancing. Um, and your infectious sense of humor and your really engaging workshops uh, kind of whet my appetite to, to learn more about you and, and really sort of throw myself into the, the salsa scene mm -hmm. here in London. But for anybody who hasn't come across you before, can you perhaps give a little, you know, two minute explainer as to who Leon Rose is? Okay, so, um, hey, uh, I'm a salsa instructor, international salsa instructor. In fact, I've traveled all over the world to teach salsa and perform. Uh, I've been in movies, I've choreographed musicals, I've done, you know, quite a few different things. And, and that's basically it. I'm just, and a part-time comedian, <laughs> part-time. Okay, well, we'll do a bit of stand-up towards the end once we've, oh, once, we've, like <laughs> once we've learned a bit more about how you, how you went from beginner to, to expert. Um, so let's rewind the clock 20 years, there or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. uh, your early 20s, you're in London. Yep. Um, how did uh, your, your salsa dancing journey begin? Okay, so um, it was because of my mum. One day she was asking me what could she do, you know, uh, she was kind of bored, you know, she's just looking after the kids and um, going to work, coming back home. And I said, you know, go and find a hobby. And she found salsa dancing. Uh, one of her friends at work who was uh, already a salsa dancer. So she went and checked it out. And like during the week afterwards, she was like saying to me, come down, come down. And I had nothing else to do. I decided, OK, let me go and check it out. And it was a place called Villa Stefano in Holborn, right next door to Holborn tube station. And I all I remember is like walking onto a film because there's like these dark stairs and as you go down, all of a sudden you just feel this heat rush over you, the humidity and the sweat. You know, I didn't smell or anything like that, but you could just feel this energy, this heat. And I opened the door and I just saw people spinning around and mm. like soaking wet t-shirts and it was just it was like a just really it was like the beginning of a film. So um, I walked in there and I was like, wow, and I saw my mum dancing. I just stood up there just watching people like, wow, what the hell is going on here? And this girl, her name was Maxine, and she come up and asked me to dance. And I said, well, I, I, I can't do this. And she said, don't worry, it was to a merengue. It wasn't even a salsa, it was a merengue. And she said, let's just dance. And she just put my hands up and started spinning. And she turned me and I was like, oh, I don't have to get drunk to dance with a girl. <laughs> I said, this is, this is great, this is great. And like people dancing all around me and that, that was it. Just that one dance made it. I think, I think if she hadn't a dance in me or mm -hmm. hadn't asked me to dance, I'm not sure I would have been there the week after. Right. It may have taken me a little while, I may have gone back, but I wouldn't have been there the week after. The week after I was there taking classes and I, mm. and I haven't stopped since. Mm. Fantastic. So um, you, you kind of nodded a little bit to uh, the the ambiance of uh, of salsa clubs, and also the, you know there's a, a little bit of when, when you're starting out. Yeah. You, you kind of need that sort of confidence yeah. boost from from the woman and vice versa. Exactly. You? Everyone I've met has always got like an origin story. My mm. origin story is walking into this club Villa Stefano. You know, there's a lot of people that I've seen kind of stumbled into a club and just saw people dancing around them and then they're like, they, they have to learn that, yeah. you know? If you don't have that, that good beginning, mm. and it's like in anything, if you don't have that, that origin story, you, you, you might not stick to it. Okay, so I so went back to the club uh, a, week, a week later. Yes. So you're 22 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so how much time did you start to invest in, uh, in dance? And wh wh where did it take off? Or where did it take you to? Well, 
I was taking, I went to, back to that same club, Villa Stefan, and I was taking classes there every week. And I would, slowly but surely, I started to improve. And then um, there was a guy called Robert Charlemagne that uh, used to come down to the club with another guy called T. And they used to teach in a uh, studio not far away from uh, the club. Right. And they, you know, very good dancers. When they walked in, they would like take over the dance floor. And uh, they came in and like, one day he came up to me and said, yo, why don't you come to my class? And his class was at the same time as the classes that I was doing at uh, Villa Stefano. So I said, well, okay, I'd already reached like an intermediate level. Sure. So I said, okay, let me go and try this out. And it was a little bit of a different style, you know, kind of a funkier style, some cool. crazy moves and stuff like that. And then um, actually I was taking classes there for a long while mm. and I ended up actually teaching for Robert in this place. And it kind of, that started my career off teaching. Yeah. You know, so that was, uh, yeah, that was then, that was like, a, like almost a year and a half after uh, starting, I was already teaching and performing. Wow, okay. Yeah. So, started teaching and performing in London, and did you, did you have any kind of aspiration as where you, uh, where you wanted to take it? Not at all, this was, just, it was just a hobby. It was, yeah. There was nothing. I had no idea I could be where I am today. Right. It was. It was nothing like that. And like for example, my first ever show was in the Royal Albert Hall. And once you do a show in the Royal Albert Hall, you're starting up here. There's you know the sky is the limit. Yeah. Or <laughs> the only way is down. <laughs> whichever way you look at it. Yeah. yeah it's the, whichever way you look at it. And it, for me, that was the best start I could have ever had. You know, performing at the Royal Albert Hall is for the Princess Diana Landmines Trust. Right. So you had like different styles of dance, different genres of dance. You had the Royal Ballet there, mm. you had River Dance, mm. you had like some Lindy Hop dances, you had the flamenco. It was really like some of the top performers in the UK performing in this one venue, this yeah. one night. And I happened to be there dancing salsa. So that was like an amazing experience, an amazing stuff. Mm. And I haven't looked back since, really. Fantastic. I mean, it sounds like you're painting a really vivid image of performing at the, the, the Royal Albert Hall. Yes. Yeah. It was like taking off quite yeah, it was, it, it was amazing. And mm. I, I remember um, <laughs> the funniest thing about that, I, um, I overdosed on Red Bull. I had like about four Red Bulls before going on stage. Yeah. And because I was so excited, my first ever performance, it was my sure. really my first ever performance on any stage. Right. And as I'm going out there, it was Nigel Havers and um, what's the name? I forgot her name now. She used to present uh, Strictly Come Dancing back in the days. Angela Rip. Rip Rip them, rip them, right. Like that. Well, 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 I add it in the credits. I'm there you go. So um, they were presenting, and Nigel Hayward said to me, directly to me, right. good luck. And I, just, <laughs> I, I, went, I went blank, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I went blank. My eyes were like wide open. I went on stage, and I didn't know what I was doing. Mm. And then the first move, I almost went too early, and my partner held me, and then I woke up, and then I just, we did it. We got it, we got it over and done with. And mm. that was. My first ever performance. It was, it was such a strange experience. It was like yeah. such a, a, an adrenaline rush, mm. and um, I I hated it and I loved it. And even up to today, I still hate and love performing. Mm. You know, I, this, that, that feeling that before I go on, I still get nervous. Yeah, I really, still get nervous. And once I do a good show, I feel so good. You know, it's like yeah. Once you're in that moment, it's yeah. like, like you're in like a trance. And you're just going for it, and it's like, mm. it's like it's almost like you're on your own on the stage. You don't even see anybody else. You're mm. just going through the motions and just performing. Just, like, just that spot, that spotlight yeah. on, on you. And yeah. you talk about that kind of natural sort of adrenaline rush, which yeah. I me, mean, even I've experienced in my kind of sort of relatively young journey of like learning how to dance and like really connecting with, yeah, that's, with people from all over the world frankly exactly exactly um is, is that something that has has kept you kept you in it kept sort of going back you know during maybe like more challenging times has it been like that connection that we spoke about off camera meeting different uh, people yeah that the, well, the thing with me if i i'm sure that if i was only dancing in london i probably would have given up because right. I knew 
within a, a period of time, I don't know, months, I knew everybody who was around mm. in the scene in sure. London. I've been to every club. I used to go to clubs every night of the week. The only night that I would probably spend at home back in the days when I first started was Saturday night, which was un unheard of. Yeah. You know, as a, as a young kid, you know, sitting at home Saturday night thinking, what the hell am I going to do? There's no mm. salsa. There's no mm. salsa. I can't wait for Sunday to be, to arrive. You know, so I was going out every night. I knew everybody. And yeah. I, I got to got to a certain level where I could, you know, go and dance with any and everybody. I was really shy actually in the beginning. Sure. I I actually only used to dance with my mum for like the first nine months. <laughs> I only danced with my mother. And if by any chance I would dance with another girl, yeah. after like a minute I would just start sweating, thinking, I don't know what else to do. I've done all my moves, that's it. I'm got done. It. I'm done, I'm over. What can I do? And it was it was a strange experience, but I it kept me going, it kept me hungry. I wanted right. to learn. I, I, I got to a point where um, I was so hungry to learn that I, I, got, I got myself a dance partner mm -hmm. and we just used to practice in my little apartment, my studio flat. Yeah. We just used to practice moves. Wow. Practice, create moves, practice the stuff that we learned in, the, in the classes. Yeah. And I just got, I, I became an addict. I, I became, uh, I used to sleep and dream of different moves and wake up and try these moves. I call up my dance partner and say, mm. we need to practice. I've got this thing that's in my head. Yeah. I'm actually still like that. I still have these dreams or these visions. I can visualize these things in, in front of me and it's mm. like, just go for it and create it. You're, you're basically taking me onto the kind of dance floor of you know, a relative, you know, I'd say I'm kind of improver slash intermediate now. Mm -hmm. I you can you know, imagine that situation in a club where I've done all my moves. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. It's, oh, what, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a girl and like, yeah. she's got this like befuddled look, you know, I'm trying to work out, is she, is she looking at me thinking, yeah. what else have you got? It's well, that's, that's the thing, you know, the one of the biggest mistakes that we do as yeah. men in this world, because we have to lead these moves. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest mistakes is we, we start to worry about what our partner's thinking. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And the thing is, once, when you dance with someone, these ladies are not remembering the moves that you're doing. It's they're funny, just following. Yeah. Really? They're just enjoying the, the moment or whatever else. If you're leading it well, they're enjoying it. Mm. You know, and it doesn't feel the same. You could do the same moves. Yeah. And you know, maybe change your hands, sure. but it feels completely different to them. Interesting. You know, so you don't even have to worry about that. And that's one of the biggest that was my biggest thing that held me back in the beginning. Like really worrying about what my partner was thinking mm. and it made me panic and then I'd end up doing the, the, the same thing over and over again and it, it felt horrible, but yeah. she didn't really know. And uh, so how, did you, how did you get over that? So you're, you're, you've got the surety about you now, like mm. having done it for 20 years, you probably yeah. led and followed, you probably learned, learned that. But. Yeah, I've, I've, done every, I've learned mm. everything about the game. I'm kind of like a, a geek when it comes to um, the south of the, 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 the connection between me and my partner. Yeah. But how I got over that was um, I realized that you don't have to think about what you're going to do. Right. You just have to let it happen. Got it. Yeah, you don't start planning, okay, I need to do the move that I learned last week and mm -hmm. just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just end up in this position. You end up in a certain position mm -hmm. and you can do the move. You, you, may, you may have learned it with your left hand. Yeah. Why not try it with your right? Yeah. Why not try it with both? Yeah. You know, why not use the shoulder? Yeah. Use the elbow? You can do so many different things. I've <laughs> seen you do that. Yeah. On videos and in person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I teach that. You yeah. Know? I, I've created a whole concept. And um, yeah, it's, it's just, just relax and just let it happen. Don't even worry yeah. about it. Don't think about it. And every mistake, I say this to all my students, mm. And anybody that I, I speak to about, about dancing, mm. every mistake yeah. is a new move, unless there's blood. <laughs> if you break something, then it's not a new move. But every mistake is a new, a, a new move, and you just gotta yeah. go with it, just let it happen. Yeah, it's funny you say that, because I, I remember um, you saying in the workshop in Croatia, you're talking mm -hmm. about, uh, it's all an illusion. Yeah. You know, like, Nobody's looking at your feet until yeah. I look at my feet. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like something's up with my feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you draw attention to it, if you make a mistake and you mm. draw attention to it, you react in a certain way, your partner's going to react. Yeah. But, you know, when you're in that moment, you, you, your partner doesn't know what you're doing. He doesn't mm. know if, she doesn't know if it's 
meant to be or not. Just let it happen. Mm. You know, just make something up and react to it in a positive way. Fantastic. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about you know your kind of international journey. I've got to know uh, salsa dancers and teachers in mm-hmm. places like Nairobi, where I used to live. And mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've started to meet people who are connecting with dance mm-hmm. all over the world. But for anybody out there who's like, I've got this sort of burgeoning interest mm-hmm. slash passion for, for for dance and salsa, yeah. especially. How can I turn this into uh, my my day job? Have you got any advice? Is it networking? Is it going out every night? Is it? Um, you know what? If you go, if you come into this as a complete beginner, mm. and and say, right, I need to make a business out of this. Yeah. Probably not going to happen. Okay, interesting. It's probably not going to happen. You have to be passionate about. It. You have to really want. You. The business comes afterwards. You have to have a passion for the actual dance. Mm. You can come into it and say, right, I'm going to organize parties. Yeah. I'm going to organize festivals. I'm going to do these kind of things. Mm. But if you want to do it like the way that I've done it, mm. you've got to have a passion for it. And I kind of fell into it. I never wanted to become a, an instructor. Sure. I never wanted to become an organizer. It just kind of happened because I loved it. Mm. You know, and I, I found a passion. Mm. But really, I, I met one guy. He he said, right, from the beginning, he was like an improver level or something like that. He said, right, I want to become an international instructor. Right. He had the passion, yeah. but he didn't have the talent. Interesting, okay. Yeah, and I think you can work, it's like anything. You can have a talent and be successful or you can work hard at something. Mm. But I, I believe you had the passion mm is one of the most important things and really focus on yourself, mm-hmm. focus on getting yourself to a certain level and then see where it takes you. Yeah. This is not the business to, because <clears throat> you can make money. Sure. And you can not make money. You know, you can be as passionate as ever and have no one in your class because you don't know how to teach or you don't know how to promote. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of aspects into it. Yeah. But I really think you just, you have to be passionate. You have to just, See what happens. Don't mm-hmm. go into it like, okay, I need to do this. I need this. This. Uh, I have an agenda. Go yeah. into it. Enjoy it. See how it is, and then after a while, you know, look at your next step. So start start with the, with, with the passion. You, you, you mentioned well, it's important, isn't it? Because like people talk about offer value first and then the money will come. Mm-hmm. I mean, you mentioned teaching and marketing. Were, were yeah. those two things that you knew how to do? Not at all. I still don't. <laughs> I still don't. Everything kind of just, I, kind of, I was kind of lucky. I wish I did. Right. Because I've, I've seen people that are maybe not as talented that are doing extremely well in the business. It, especially now with this, the, the social media and stuff. I'm, I'm from a generation where YouTube came in a little bit while after we already, already started. Right, right, right. And people come in and they were filming us and we were like, no, turn off the camera. We'll go and wipe cameras and stuff like that. We didn't want anybody to follow us around. Now, yeah. the new generation are filming themselves, posting the videos out free, but it's actually working. Mm, yeah. It's actually working. So the older, the old generation have kind of had to switch and get into that. Yeah. Which is kind of hard in the beginning, but now I'm starting to like, relax and go into it but if you do have a business mind Mm. and the talent and the passion Mm. you can go really far interesting Mm. um who who's been the biggest influence would you say on your on your life and and then your career like that could be the same person um there's no there's no one person okay there's no one person for me it's like I've seen a lot of people, I've learned a lot of things from other people, but I've always been, maybe somebody that knows me from the outside could probably say, oh well, you know, you spent more time learning here or spent more time talking to this person or whatever else. Mm. But for me, I've always been a kind of person that I like to feel that I've done it on my own, even though I know I haven't. I like to feel that I've learned something, you know, I've kind of created it on my own. It's it's kind of a strange way of thinking, but it's just, it's just my mentality, like, um, yeah. I'll go and do a class 
and then I don't want to do the same thing as the as what the pattern or the the, 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 the turn pattern that I've learned in the class. I don't want to do the same thing. Mm. I will take that and it's in the back of my mind, it's in my subconscious. Yeah. I want to go and produce something that I feel is me. Yeah. You know, even though it has been influenced by somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are teachers that I, I you know I can definitely say I learned from. I learned a lot from, but I also I do like to say feel. Yeah, that I've done a lot of it on my own. It sounds a little bit strange when I say it out loud, but it's, you know, I've really... A personal drive, I mean, it's yeah. you that's getting you out of bed, isn't it? It's yeah, exactly, exactly, you know, because I, I learned a lot of things. I used to go to New York, right? And, I, and I've learned a lot of things and I've taken a lot of things. Yeah. And I've kind of developed something that is kind of unique to me. Mm -hmm. I thought... I was doing the same thing as other people. Right. And then until, like, you must know that, like, there's a, the, the LA style and there's yeah. the New York style. It's two different things. And in London, we, as I said before, we didn't have YouTube, so we had to create. Got so it. somebody would come over, they would teach us one move, mm. and we would, like, for the whole year, we would have to make something out of those moves and we'd have to stretch it out. And we would go down in different directions. And that's why it felt like I was kind of creating it because it's, it's like someone giving you a, a, a pen and teaching you how to draw a line. Yeah, and go from there. Yeah, and then you just have to work out where you're going and you can end up drawing, you know, a masterpiece. Mm. And this is, this is how it was for us. We really had to work, or well, for me, I had to really work yeah. uh, at, at creating. And so I thought I was dancing LA star. I went to LA yeah. in 2001. And I didn't dance anything like them. So I said, okay, I must be doing New York style. I went to New York. I wasn't dancing like them at all because the things that they gave us was only a small part of it, right. a small section. Yeah. And we just, well, I had just gone on a different direction. We in London had gone on a different direction, mm -hmm. you know, and I kept going on that, that direction and I've completely changed from how I was then to how I am now. Right. Interesting. So it's the, it's the Leon style, it's the Leon Rose style. Well, we, you know, back in the days we called it London style, but it wasn't. Right. You know, it wasn't. It was just like, I have my own style. There's another guy that we, uh, Super Mario, you've probably heard of him. Yeah. So we started around about the same time and like, uh, we never did the same classes, but we had the, that same kind of uh, vision to just like create. We used to compete with each other. Like he'll come to the club yeah. and he'd say, yeah, but Leon, I've got this move. And I say, yeah, well, I've got this move. And then we just kind of battle out with these moves and then you know I would go I, I would go off in a certain direction he would go off in a certain direction because we had a height difference he's quite tall <laughs> so his moves would be kind of like the ladies would be able, very it would be very easy for them to pass onto his arm right like for me I'd have to adjust and do something a little bit different yeah. so we went on a completely different route mm -hmm. you know like how we dance now is completely different there's no relation yeah you know and um, yeah I've, as I said before I've I've created a concept mm -hmm. actually called Salsitsu. It's a mixture of uh, Jiu Jitsu and uh, Salsa. It's kind of it's kind of strange. It was um, well, basically, I'd already gotten a reputation of having uh, like crazy moves. Right. I was teaching all over the place. I've heard. I've heard. Yeah. So I've always, I've always been teaching these crazy moves, and in London, all the girls over here could follow them, no problem. Right. And. Um, Right about the time I first started going to Paris, not the first time, yeah. I, I had a girlfriend in Paris. Okay. So I'd go over there and I would dance. I went to this one particular club and I was dancing with these girls and one girl dropped on the floor. And I was like, I looked down at her and thought to myself, why isn't she following me? Right, right. You know? And not long after that, I started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay. And I remember my instructor, a short Brazilian guy, yeah. older guy, and he used to have these little glasses on. And there was one guy that used to kick my ass all the time. And my instructor said to the guy, come, let's fight. He took off his glasses. And this guy was quite big. And it was amazing how my instructor beat him every time. And he wasn't using force. Right. He was just moving, using his, his body weight, using everything that he was giving against him. And he would just submit him anytime he wanted. Interesting. And I said, how can I adapt that into my salsa? So I spent... Well, that was like nine years ago, nine, ten years ago. Mm. And I spent that time yeah. creating what I, what I do now. Mm. So I can do the same crazy moves that I was doing before yeah. with less force. So that's why I call it Salsitu. It's a joke and now it's kind of stuck. Mm. 
Yeah. And I mean, that's, so you, you have been quite innovative in, in sort of bringing in different, you know, something which one might think, what has mm. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu got to, do with, yeah. got to do with dance? But I mean, you know, there are some people who, you know, I've, I've spoken to people and said, yeah, come down to salsa night. And they're like, oh no, I have two left feet. Yeah, no, so, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. For me, you know, I, I I'm a, a martial artist. I haven't been studying recently, but yeah. I, I'm a, I've been I've always been interested in martial arts. For me, dancing is like learning. Is like learning the martial arts. What you do when you go to a class, you go and learn a pattern. Right. You can do that on the dance or in salsa mm -hmm. or in a taekwondo, for example. Mm -hmm. You learn the pattern, and then you go and free fight. Yeah. In salsa, you're not trying to hurt anybody. Sure. But in um, in Taekwondo, you're trying to you're trying to win, and you've got to use your your, your opponent's body in a mm -hmm. certain way. Mm -hmm. You've got to react to what they're doing, yeah. and it's the same kind of principle. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same principle. You're using your opponent, you're reacting. Everything is a reaction. So it comes to the point when you've done so many classes, you've done these moves so many times, mm. everything just flows. You don't even think about it; it just happens. And that's what it's all about. And how do you? Uh, I, my mind is taken back to to Sunday salsa on Sundays. Yes. Um, at which I think I gather. So we're going to the origin of salsa on Sundays. Mm -hmm. I gather that you were involved in that. Mm -hmm. But before before we do, just in, you, you use the word mechanical. How how do how how do I avoid? dancing in a mechanical way and just start to feel the music because you know for a relative newbie it's like I know three or four moves like down to the ground yeah. and then I can mix it up a little bit. Well it's like I, I think it's like with any dance you know you can actually survive with just a few turn patterns. Right. You can survive. Yeah. You can do the same turn pattern with your left as I said before your left hand your right hand. Yeah. After a while it's just Relax, sure. just let it happen, sure. and just enjoy it. Start to listen to the music and just relax and enjoy yourself. <laughs> when you start to enjoy yourself, your partner can feel it and she, yeah, yeah. she starts to enjoy it. I remember one of the best dances I ever had was a, with a, a, a lady called uh, Andrea Stewart. Right. And um, she's a performer, still a performer now, very good. Okay. And I remember dancing with her and like, I was at a certain point there, I was at an advanced level mm -hmm. and I, I started to relax when I was dancing. So I danced with her and I did a move and then she did something else. And I said, like, uh oh, I did something and it got to the point that at the end of the dance, I was on such a high right. that I had to go home. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, 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 I was done. It really? I was done. I, I left. I, I, every time I see her, I tell her the same story. I was done. I, I, I had the, one of the best dances I've had in years. Slimy. I think it was the best dance I'd, I'd ever had at that time. Yeah. And it was just amazing to, to dance with somebody. And I wasn't even thinking about what I was doing. It just like happened. You, mm. you just react. And like over the years, I've got to the point where it's amazing to dance with somebody that can follow you yeah. and has a certain reaction. And then you react to that. Sure. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be just like a head movement. It could be your shoulders. Yeah. It could be, you could add anything you want. You can, if you want, if you know how to do a tap dance, just do a tap dance in the middle and then carry on. It doesn't matter. Just do whatever. So yeah, Im improvise and like feel it. Yeah. And you know, w w when you're telling that story, I'm like, it's funny. It, it sounds like a kind of well, romantic, unromantic thing. My, my head's like, what, how come you guys didn't live happily ever after? You know, it's, it's like... It's only a dance, it's only really? a dance. Yeah. Is it, so have, you, have, you, have you found the one on the dance floor? Because you know, often you, know, you see guys and girls dancing together and it can be this kind of sensual thing, especially in Kazomba and stuff. Yeah, well, Gizomba and, for example, Bachata, Bachata mm. Sensual is, is, is something different. Salsa is, you can be close, you yeah. can be whatever, but it's, it's just a dance. Yeah. It's just a dance. Be, you know, you can mix up those emotions. <laughs> you can, it's possible I've, to mix up. I've never up. done that. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Should, can, we, can we close the loop on the right on the yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so for uh, anybody out there who is, uh, you know, in a relationship with a, a girlfriend, a boyfriend right now, uh, and, uh, you know, they're on the salsa scene because, you know, it can be, it's not quite bachata and kazomba, but it mm. can be this kind of cocktail of confusing emotions at times. Have you got yeah. any advice for 
the girls and the guys, the South Seas and the South Areas out there? Well, if you if you you talking about if they're in a relationship already? Yeah, if they're in a relationship, it's only people. a dance. Okay, it's only a dance. Um, Remember that it's only a dance. It's and whatever you do after that is you. <laughs> you know, if you're going out for some extramarital uh, business, then <laughs> <laughs> then you it's just open up a door that was already right. there to be open. Right, right, right. You know. But it is, it's just a dance. If you're going into the sensual dances, mm. like bachata sensual and uh, um, gizomba, that's something different because your body is, is, is pressed up against somebody else's. Yeah. You know, and if you're dancing, not just one track, in salsa, generally, we'll go and dance with somebody, we'll have one dance, mm. and then we'll go on. We may come back and dance with them later on. Right. But with the other dances, for example, gizomba, a lot of people told, a lot of people told me over the years, it's, it's normal to have three dances. And when you're close, yeah. pressed up against someone, mm. and you're having going for like three songs, yeah, eh. it's you know it's it's some something stuff happens, right? Things happen. Things happen. Things right? happen. You know, things get confused. Sure, you know, course, so yeah. there's a lot of people say, oh, it's only about it's the feeling, it's the feeling of the dance. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, if I'm if I'm dancing, like, it could be techno. If I'm squeezed up against somebody like this for Where three songs, beings, Leo. yeah, Where come human on. Beings. You know, one person's gonna be start is gonna start reacting in a certain way. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, so um, yeah. But it is only a dance. Mm. But if the door is already open, then it's, what more can you do? And, and for anybody who's, who is thinking about actually, you know, I'm going to get into dance because I want to find the no, one. No, no, no. Bad idea? No. Go into the dance because you want to learn the dance. You want yeah. to enjoy it. Don't go in there looking for a relationship. If, if, you're, if relationship is going to be in that environment, you're going to find it. It's going to happen. Sure, sure. Just go in there and go and enjoy the dance. There's so many things that you could do. Mm. And once you have... Once you can dance with somebody, once you're able to, as a guy, once you're able to control your partner in whatever you're doing, mm. and ladies, once they're able to follow anybody, mm. you can actually go anywhere in the world and just enjoy yourself. You know, you can walk into a club by yourself, no yeah. matter where you are, in China, Australia, in America, Canada, South America, you can dance. You've just blown my mind, you know, there's uh, seven billion people on the planet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You, like when I before I really became really well known, I, I'd already been teaching in certain places. I remember I went to the Canary Islands mm. and I just walked into this club and I was, I was with my family. I just walked into this club on my own, and somebody recognised me from right. a class that I taught in a work in a workshop somewhere, and they like introduced me to everybody in the nice. club. And, I, and then from then I was going out every night with these people. I'd never met most of them before, and it was I had a great time. And it's just like, really, dance, mm. no matter what dance it is, it just opens up doors. <laughs> many doors. <laughs> but it opens up doors, you can meet so many people. Yeah. You know, you can go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be, your, that should be a, a reason to learn. You know, Madonna, that, that Madonna trap music makes the people come together. It's like, yeah. you can get yeah. we all, you know, I see my, my niece dancing yeah. three and a half years old, it's like, Rhythm and music, yeah. and for, you know, for 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 the the guys with two left feet out there, I think we touched on this a little bit earlier. But can can anybody dance? That whatever, Any, whatever age, anybody can dance. Okay, anybody can dance. It doesn't matter if you think you have left two left feet. Yeah. If from salsa partner dancing is this for a guy, um, you have to learn where to put your left foot. You have to learn where to put your right foot. You can you can do it mechanically. It doesn't matter. Anybody can learn. <laughs> it's just like doing this. Anybody can do that. Okay. Left hand up, right hand down. That's that's it. That's the basics. Okay. You understand? If you can do that with your hands, you can do that with your feet. Sure. sure. If you can do that with your feet, you can do that with your hands and your feet. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's yeah. just teaching your body, once your body understands where it's supposed to be at a certain count, yeah. you can do it, maybe mechanical, but mm -hmm. after a while, once it becomes into your system, then you can start to enjoy the music a little bit more. For guys, it's a little bit harder because there's so many rules that we have to learn. Yeah. So many things that we have to do, we have to be able to control our body and control our partner's body. But then once you get that, everything is just free. Just relax, mm. let it happen. Good, good advice and good tips. Um, so I've got a couple more questions here. Was there ever a time over the past 20 years where 
you you have perhaps going through a dark time in, in, in your career. I mean, you know, it sounds like it kind of took off and there was no looking back for you. Was it, Were there ever any kind of tipping points where you thought, this isn't for me, whether it was in China or you know, where, Kenya, wherever you've traveled, was there ever a moment where you thought, actually, am I doing the right thing? Um, well, there's, there's, there's a couple of ways of looking at this. Um, I've had a couple of different dance partners over the years. Okay. And if you look at it from a business point of view, every time you change dance partners, it's like almost like you're starting again from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, if, you're, if you're doing this internationally, you're traveling to different congresses and whatever else, mm. you're known as Leon and somebody. Yeah. You understand? And the moment that you lose that somebody, you're, 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 you're not a complete product. Interesting. You're not a complete product. So what I did from early is I worked on me, I worked on my brand, which right. was Leon Rose. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I've always been known as Leon Rose. It's never been Leon and partner. Okay. It's always been Leon Rose and some, somebody else, or somebody else and Leon Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was for me very, very important to work on me and my brand. Because once you establish yourself as a couple, mm. and the moment that breaks, it really is starting again. You have to, you have to find a way. You yeah. have to make that name. And if you're only known by your first name, it's yeah. kind of difficult. You know, marketing. You understand about marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's difficult to market yourself as with just your first name. There's only a few people that are able. But to do Madonna that. did it. Puff, yeah. Puff, Puffy did it, and then changed. <laughs> oh, exactly. But they would never. Yeah. It was never Madonna and. You understand exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, Womack and Womack, one yeah, Womack yeah. is not the same as Womack and Womack. It's you know, different things, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Challenges. Yeah. Um, so it's, it was very important for me to work on my brand and me person, mm -hmm. pers personally. And one of the things that I had to work on was my classes. And I, I love teaching. Right. And uh, so one of the things I had to be known for was my teaching. Yeah. I had to, like, I'm very competitive. Okay. Extremely competitive. So my objective is I want to be, I want to give the best workshops in a festival. Okay. I want to give the best classes anywhere. Mm. I want people to say, oh my God, Leon's class was amazing. You know, it, it that's, that's my thing. They were, yeah. yeah. I, I love it. I love it. I want people to learn something mm. unique mm. from me and I want people to have a good time. I want people to laugh. And I, you know, I'm a control freak as well. So I'm like, I want people to laugh when I want them to laugh, and I want them to be silent when I want them to silent. Mm. And at the end of the class, I want their mind to be blown. You know, so that's always been my objective, and I've been working on that since the beginning. You know, and that is my mark. Mm -hmm. So whether my shows are good, my sh some of my shows have been really bad over the years. Yeah. Some have been really good. What do you mean, mm. yeah? <laughs> <laughs> So you understand what I'm saying? Some of them being good is you know it's how you interpret it, how you how you see it. I know for myself, I know when I'm happy and when I'm not, yeah, with yeah, what yeah. I've done. But what I, what's what has been consistent is I've always tried to make my workshops fun and I've always tried to compete. You know, I'm mm. I'm not saying that I, uh, I'm not even thinking about the other teachers that are there. Yeah. I'm thinking about myself. I want people to say, wow, this class was really good. I wanna, want them to call me back. Yeah. Those are the people, the people that enjoy my workshops are the ones that are gonna say that to, prom to the promoters, yeah. we need to bring this guy back because his classes were good. So I, I really try and work on that. Mm. That's one thing I'm very, 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 uh, I work very hard at. Yeah. Well, that, hence why I got in touch with you. You know, you're a memorable person, you're funny, you're humorous, your enthusiasm, etc., etc. Um, what about biggest strength and biggest weakness? You, you talked uh, there about, you know, you, you were saying, did you say you were control free? Yeah. Yes. So it's almost like this kind of humility that you, you've built up this like, real sort of personal awareness. Are you aware of your weaknesses as well as your, your strengths? Well, definitely, definitely. I know like my strength, I can walk into a room full of people and I can become the life and soul of that, that room. Yeah. I know how to do that. Yeah. You know, that, that is one thing I 
kind of discovered okay. as a 15, 16 year old at school. Yeah. Then I, I can just get people around me to do whatever I want in, within, <laughs> within reason. Within reason. Okay. Yeah. So, and I love that. I love yeah. being that, that thing. That's like a buzz to me. Sure. You know, and uh, yeah, also I know my weaknesses. I know uh, what I can, for example, performing. I know what I can and I can't do with my body. Right. You know, I, I can't do what I used to be able to do like 20 years ago Got it. or 10 years ago. But I use that to my advantage. Mm -hmm. If I, I know what I can't do, so I, I play to what I can do. Interesting. And that's very, very important. Yeah. You know, in, in everything, in everything that I'm doing, in the, in the business, with the, the actual business side of, uh, you know, making money out of this, mm. and also the performance side of it. Okay. And the teaching side of whatever, everything else. I've got to make sure I work my strengths. Mm, yeah, Every, everything you need to do that, you know. Um, but what I should do, one of my weaknesses is not working enough on my weaknesses. Right, okay. Yeah, it, it, it sounds strange, but it is true, you know. Um, you've got to be able to look at your weaknesses. I see people that, like, they know they're not that strong at it. Right. But they'll go for it. Okay. And I'm a person that will, I kind of hold, I, I keep myself back rather than putting the extra work into it, I go to where it's easier. Mm. And so that's one thing I've been, I've always been struggling with, is just to, to push myself more. Yeah. So I, like I really, I know I yeah. could have done more, I've done a lot. Yeah. I've been in movies, I've, got, I've choreographed for movies, I've, I've danced in, uh, in, in movies and musicals. Yeah. I've done a lot of different things, I've, won, I've been in competitions on TV and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But I know I could have done more. Still, yeah. I mean, you've still got scope to to go and do quite and yeah. more. I mean, yeah. what what else would you like to do? Where would you like to take your career? I mean, it's twenty year strong career. Arguably, you know, I see guys in the dance world like, who, are, who are seventy years old. Mm. Uh, do, do you do you want to build? I don't know. Do you do you want to? Uh, write? What it is is like. In the beginning, my passion was dancing, just social dancing, going on a dance floor yeah. and just letting loose, being able to do anything I want. Yeah. My passion has moved from that. I don't need to go out every night like I used to do. Yeah. I don't need to do that. But what I do love doing is creating. I'm, I love creating and I love teaching. Mm. So I love putting together a routine, not necessarily performing it. Yeah. I do like performing it, but I still get stage fright. Mm. But it's not as bad as, you know, as some people, I still get it, but I love the, the finished product. Mm -hmm. But what I do, my, the biggest thing, my biggest passion right now is going into a studio with my dancers or with a, a group of people that may not be necessarily be in my team, yeah. but like I choreograph other people as well. Okay. I love just the challenge of working out what moves can be done to in, at what point to a certain song. I love that challenge. Yeah. Like right now, I'm helping a lot of people. I'm helping like people doing gizomba shows. Right. I'm not a gizomba performer. Yeah. I can dance it, but I'm not at all a gizomba performer. Sure. But right now, I'm helping people put that together. Interesting. Bachata. I'm not a bachata performer. I can do it. I have done it, but yeah. I don't consider myself that. But I, I love the challenge of being able to go into a studio and say, okay, what is the best way to put these moves together to this music so that the public will appreciate it. Yeah. You know, and I love that challenge. And that's my thing. And I want to do that more, yeah. like on bigger scales. I want to mm. put together musicals. I want to mm. put together, like I've even writ written a synopsis for a film. Fantastic. And I, I'm started write, I started writing a book, as I told you before. Yeah. I started writing a book. I've only done two chapters. I'm doing so many things. I'm, what I want to be able to do, another one of my weaknesses, sure. is to focus. I go all yeah. over the place, I need to focus. Yeah. So once I get that, I'll be happy. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be able to finish these product, pro projects that I'm doing. But, you know, I have done a lot, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. do have to, it's some people, like friends of mine have to remind me yeah. that, look what you have actually achieved. And yeah. I have actually achieved a lot. And I love it. But I want to do more. <laughs> Awesome. Well, any agents out there, ghostwriters, <laughs> Leon Rose takes out a giant billboard anywhere in the world. That could be in China, London. First of all, where would that billboard be, which might be less important than, you know, your worldview, your philosophy on that massive billboard. That could be in Times Square, could be Piccadilly Circus. And that could be, you know, a message to your 22-year-old self 
that you know it could be like your inspirational message to, to, to the heart of that 22 year old or anybody out there who's struggling with whatever they're going through what, what would that bill would say it would say you can do it you can do it you can do it like really I I I asked it to you before off camera yeah. that uh, I remember my first big competition that I won in 2000 in Scarlet was the Bacardi uh, UK salsa competition and we finished the choreography like no just before we finished the choreography it was like I said to myself I shouldn't be doing this I, I don't mm. know why I'm doing this mm. I don't it, something's not right you know I, I knew it was going to be a winner mm. and it, it just felt strange to me yeah. and then when we actually finished the routine I knew that we'd actually won before we did it it sounds arrogant or whatever, mm. but it's not like that. I really had this belief that we had actually won the competition mm. and it almost felt like I didn't deserve it. Yeah. You know, so that's what I would, you know, I would love to say to myself back then, you can do it, just have mm. faith, just, just do it. You know, and everything I've held back on, I wish I would, would, would just go for it. Yeah. You know, just do it. Have I stolen that from somewhere else? <laughs> quite, <laughs> quite possibly, but you know, like like you say, the message or yeah. or, or the narrative you're, you're you're describing there is is almost sometimes we don't feel worthy of yeah exactly our achievements yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly just just go for, go for it it doesn't mm. matter what anybody else thinks yeah I, you know I've always been worried about what uh, whatever people think about what I'm doing yeah forget about that just go out and do it some of the most successful people that I know mm. are so Focus. They don't. They have these blinkers on. They can. You can tell them whatever else, but they just like I'm going yeah. for this. And I've never been like that. I, I, at moments I'm like that. And someone says this, I go that way, and I go that sure. way. You know, just I just want to go for it. I wish I had gone for it. Mm. And did you get? Did you get help with that? With like people, you know, pe the people pleasing, people criticizing you, or did you have to go through the kind of the pain of, you know, because people's uh, six and I've, stones, etc. Oh yeah, I've gone through a lot of pain. I had people writing a lot of madness on the internet about me. Mm -hmm. And it, it, did, it did affect me. It did affect me. It's one of the reasons why I kind of stopped teaching in London. Right. Because there was a group of people that were just like going crazy on the internet. Uh, I had a chat room on my website mm -hmm. and they were just like writing a lot of madness. And I said, you know what? I'm done with London. I'm going to start traveling around the world and teaching. And I did. Fantastic. Well, good for you. you know? And uh, where are you now? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So uh, final question. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. What are, you, what are you grateful for in your life today? What am I grateful for? I'm, I'm grateful that I know and can go almost anywhere in the world mm. and teach and maybe they, they know me already I, I, yeah. I, I just love that mm -hmm. I can go anywhere and do by myself with my mm. group or whatever you know the world is really my oyster and I love that uh, and yeah. dance has been the vehicle for that salsa dance, salsa it, it is salsa yeah. it's not even you know, dance in general, it's salsa that's taken me all over the place and I'm so grateful for that. And uh, yeah, and I've met so many people along the way. You know, I love languages. I, I love to be able to communicate with people and mm. this has been, the salsa has been my vehicle. Fantastic. And where can people get in touch with you? How can they get in touch with you? Any, anybody out there who wants to follow up on the, you know, go to a workshop or etc. Very, very easy. Leon Rose, very easy to find me on Facebook. Okay. Everyone's using Facebook these days. Um, yeah, just go and just check me out on Facebook. I'm there, I'm, I'm active. Fantastic. Thanks very much for tuning in, Mr. Leon Rose. Thank you, guys. We just win every day.